Hey everybody, Fun Stanford's Journey Coach Janice Whiting here. I am back after, gosh, it seems like a forever long break. Life just got super, super busy. School started up. It's already almost the end of August, shy just about a week. And not only that, but I started graduate school. Yep. I sure did. I'm crazy. I mean, if it's prob it's pretty typical of me to pick up something extra to do, as if I don't have so much to do already. Um, anyway, but I am happy to be back. I have today a super cute card to show you. It's kind of fall inspired. I'll do it this way as well so you can see. And it is actually the card for our Journey Sketches Challenge, challenge number 45. So if you are not on our Facebook group called Journey Sketches, and then go on over there. What you waiting for? We provide a new sketch challenge for a card, um, and you can translate that sketch into a um, really anything you want. I was thinking of scrapbook, but you could do whatever um, and submit it for our challenge. And we do a random uh, drawing every month for all the participants. And then every week we will pick just our favorite whom. Does it matter? Just just depends on what we liked that week. Um, anyway, the random drawing is actually for a stamp set of choice. So that's a nice incentive to hop on over and play with us. So this is the card, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I how I uh, put it all together. Okay, I think it's pretty 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 simple, pretty easy to do. But there's a few things that I'll show you um, that you might not uh, can. Uh, notice right away. So to start off with, we are using a, and you know what, I'm going to go ahead and switch over because you don't need to see my face. Let me switch over here so that you can see the, there you go. And uh, I'll be up here. Um, all right, let me see if we can scooch this over to the side so we can get a little bit better view. All right, so we're going to start off with a regular whipped cream uh, cardstock done A2 tent fold style so you know that's my favorite I they're just my favorite kinds uh and they're supply awesome uh so to begin we're going to use that and we're going to use one of my new favorite sets which is so pretty i don't know if you guys ever um use background sets uh sets stamp sets but I I don't often but this one came out in our mini catalog and I kind of fell in love and hopefully that will focus there. There you go. Isn't it adorable? It's like little little pumpkin branches. I think it's so sweet. I love it. I love it. I love it. So it's called Color Me Fall. And I use this with our oatmeal cookie stamp set. And I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, stamp positioner tool to get this on here. And isn't that, <laughs> you can tell I use this a lot. It's terrible looking. It's all dirty. So I'm going to go ahead and put the card base down. Now because I'm using the entire stamp, I can't really use the magnet. So I'm just going to tape it down in here. Right in there. Good. And then line this up right over it and make sure that it's kind of flush with the side there then take your oatmeal cookie and I like to stamp it a couple of times and actually let me get one more piece of tape because I also you see this part up here is kind of uh, sticks up a bit I'm kind of I always get nervous it's gonna like fly up and then it messes up my stamping and I don't want that to happen all right, so this is oatmeal cookie. I think I'm going to do it uh, a couple of times, maybe three. Sometimes three is the magic number. There's one. Ooh, so pretty. So the oatmeal cookie, I'm using the oatmeal cookie just because it's going to create a nice light background. It's not going to be too dark. It's not going to be too um, in your face kind of look. And actually, I think that actually I don't need any more than that because this middle section is going to be covered with the... Um, middle layer so twice was enough all right isn't that so pretty I love it it's so sweet 
I can also imagine coloring this. It's called Color Me Fall, and it'd be so, so fun if you're uh, someone who likes to color. Um, okay, so we've got this, and then from here, we basically have a whole bunch of fun layers. So I'm going to start showing you the pattern paper that I'm using for this card, and it is called fall o -ween prints. Look how cute, 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 cute. So obviously, as it says, fall o -ween, some prints for fall and some prints for, prints for Halloween. And actually, they're all adorable. I actually kind of love this little skeleton one. I'm not a huge Halloween person, but come on, look at that cute little skeleton. Oh, it's not focusing on me. Well, just take my word for it. It's super cute. But we're going to be using this sheet here. I just really loved the flowers. Uh, mixed with this kind of fun mustardy yellow color and it kind of went along a little bit with that um, oh gosh color me fall background stamp so what you're going to do is you are going to need a strip of this pattern print paper and it's basically just an inch by five inches okay I'm gonna put that one off to the side you are also going to need some of our corrugated paper so our corrugated cardstock, and you guys, every time I use this, I think of my good, good friend, Kazan Clark. She is like the queen of corrugated cardstock. She uses it so brilliantly. So I was using this today and thought of her. And so the size for this, and actually this is going to be the base that goes on top right here. Okay. You'll layer it. So the size is, gosh, I think it's three, yes, three and three fourths by five. All right. That's going to eventually go right there. Okay. Then there's a strip, a half inch by five inch strip of the black. So our black licorice. You're also going to use some of our cocoa powder crimp ribbon. Super, super pretty. I just love this cute stripey pattern. Um, and yeah, I think I cut about be quite honest guys I don't usually measure when I cut ribbon I just I say measure I mean like actual get an actual length a specific measurement it's about six inches okay all right so we'll need that um and then so that's kind of get your base going from there you're going to work on this next little uh piece that is what I think the cutest part of it which is our cute little squirrel and what you'll need to get that ready is you'll need a piece of our whipped cream that is two and a half by three inches. You're also going to need some scrap uh, cardstock, okay, some scrap white. Um, and I just, you know, I have just whatever scrap you have available because you're going to actually stamp the little uh, squirrely in his nuts twice, once on the original and then the second time you're going to pop him up. And then the last piece that you're going to need is a little bit of our uh, cocoa powder um, or dark roast, excuse me, dark roast cardstock. And this is half an inch by, I believe it is two and a half. Yes. So half an inch by two and a half. And you are going to use that to create that little sentiment panel right there. All right. Okay. So that is all that you need, all your little pieces. So now let's go ahead and put it together. So... Starting from the bottom up, I used our Journey Craft glue to adhere the pattern paper down. And isn't this a fun print too? It's always so hard because our uh, printed paper, number one, is really great quality. So 65 pound print paper. And then it's double sided. So it's got cute prints on both sides. It just makes me feel bad. I feel bad whenever I put glue on one side and I hide it. <laughs> so as you saw there, I am... I just adhered it to um, directly on top of the corrugated section. Remember that corrugated section was, um, <laughs> it was three and three quarters by five inches. Okay. All right. And then from there, you're going to get that strip of the black, which was the half inch by five inch, five inches. You're going to, oh guys, looky there. Uh, <laughs> I got a message. You're going to go ahead and adhere that directly to the corrugated stock right next to the pattern paper. Okay. 
Okay, so we've got the black down. Sometimes um, I will go back and I will look just in case I trimmed my paper a little off and I could tell this is just a little longer than my base. Literally just, I mean, a minuscule amount, but there. Okay, so we've got that done. Then you're going to take your double-sided white liner tape. Super, I love this for so many different reasons, but especially for ribbon, makes it super easy to um, put ribbon down. And the ribbon is going to go right down <laughs> to the side. You guys, it's so funny. I thought it was in the middle. I thought that was my original plan, but I'm looking at the card going, no gosh, you didn't do that. <laughs> so it's going to go right here. And I'm going to go a little bit over, so a little bit of, um, whatever you call that, overlap, I don't know, hanging, a little bit hanging, leave a little <laughs> bit hanging. <laughs> so I leave a little bit hanging there because I also fold it down because the ribbon is going to be folded down as well. And that's what's going to make it stick to the back. Okay, so I'm just kind of pressing this down so it sticks. Then I'm going to peel the backing off. Okay. So we can see it's got that sticky. So again, it's just our awesome double-sided tape. Then from there, you take your um, about six inch long piece ribbon and just line it up and then press firmly down. And then you can fold this over and you see that it goes right over the double-sided tape and boom, baby, it's adhered. Sweet. So super simple pad, um, I was about to say panel. Yeah, panel, uh, background panel. And this is going to be popped up right on top of your uh, card base. And we are going to use some of our large foam squares. And I do one in the middle and one in each corner. Uh oh, right row. And this one, you know, whenever you have a kind of clean and simple card, and you're like, what can I do to make, I mean, there's always tons of options. Well, there's usually a lot of different options that you can do, uh, you can choose to kind of give a little bit of interest to your card, but popping the card up using foam squares is probably one of the easiest options. And I'm going to make sure that that's centered. It's probably one of the easiest options that um, a crafter has for adding interest to a card. So it's definitely something you want might want to consider. So you see it almost, you can see it gives a little bit of depth because it's raised up, raised up and it has a little bit of a shadow there. So kind of fun. All right. So we've got our card base and we've got that first panel and now let's go to Mr. Squirrely because he's so cute. Um, so you're going to get that piece of whipped cream paper that is two and a half by three and bring over your stamp positioner tool. And you take don't have to have one of these. I just, it's kind of like, is it kind of like a crutch? I don't know. You're going to take this cute little squirrely stamp. Oh my gosh, you guys. This came from the all year long stamp. This is one of the stamps that you can uh, buy if you have a $600 party. Gosh, oh. I know it sounds like a lot, but you guys, if you host a party and you have friends that put in orders, it actually doesn't take that long to get to the $600 total. Um, anyway, this then becomes available. So it's a pretty much exclusive stamp set, but isn't he so cute? I just love him and so many of the other things. I'm also going to use this sentiment here that says you're the best. So adorable. All right. So this little guy, I'm going to position him center and kind of towards the top. So I want to leave a little bit of room at the bottom for my sentiment. Okay, and I actually use two ink pads for him. The first one is our pumpkin bread, which is definitely very fall-esque color. And um, I just go ahead and ink them all up and I stamp him a couple of times. There's one, so sweet. And then two, and then the third time I do something a little different. I still ink them up regularly, okay? Then I come back with our black licorice and I come and I, I just kind of get the edges 
of him. I get some of the acorn stuffs. I'm kind of trying real careful. I get his belly. I get his little feetsies. A little bit of the tail, the side of the tail. I mean, you can kind of have fun with it, play around with it. And then I stamp that third time and boom. Look how cute. So now he's got a little bit of depth and dimension because I've added a little bit of that darker color on the side. So precious. Okay, so he's done. All right. Then you will take a little spongy. Okay, and we do sell these little spongies and some of our oatmeal cookie. And we are going to go old school today and we are going to ink the edges. You guys, you know that if you've been crafting for a while, that inking edges, distressing the edges, I mean, you, whatever you want to call it, used to be the thing to do. You would do this with just about everything. It doesn't matter what it was. I remember, gosh. I was about to tell you a date, but I'm not going to tell you a date. <laughs> Just, if you're a crafter, you know what I'm talking about. This was the thing to do all the time. And in this particular case, and for this card, I didn't want to layer it because I kind of liked the light square, but I felt like it needed something around the sides. And this little um, giving of little ink around the edges was perfect. It's perfect. Oh, so still sweet. Um, okay. Now what we're going to do is again, to give it a little bit of depth and dimension, you're going to stamp this guy one more time, and then you're going to fussy cut him out for the sake of time. I've already done that. And so I've fussy cut him and I've cut him and some of the, um, what are they called? Acorns out. <laughs> There's only one little section that I'm going to cut real quick while you guys are watching because that won't take too long. And it's this little section right here. But basically, I'm going to take some of our foam squares and I'm going to pop him up again with for that same reason that when I pop him up, it just gives a little bit of extra dimension and depth to the card and a little bit more interest, which is kind of fun. All right. So we're going to take him and so fun and we're going to get some of our small foam squares and i'm going to put one on the tail top one towards his tail bottom one i don't remember if i did the middle i think i did the center and then one at the acorn so it's about four or so and i'm going to take the backings off which is like my least favorite thing to do people if you watch my videos you know it's my least favorite thing also by the way cynthia if you're watching hi friend <laughs> I'm back and I, I want to do a scrapbook project, Cynthia. Um, and I've got a few ideas in my mind. Um, the thing is, okay, so here's the problem with me and scrapbooks is that that means I need pictures and I do have pictures, but I don't have them printed out. You know, that commercial where they're stuck in midair. That's kind of like me. So I have to take the time to go and print out pictures. <laughs> okay. So here he is. So you can see he's popped up there. Again, it just adds that little extra, I think I'm gonna put a little pop dot on his head so he doesn't fall flat on his head. It just gives a little bit of extra depth and dimension to him. And then after I pop him up, I'm gonna take, there was a marker somewhere, and I'm going to, hello, just put a little dot on his eye. There we go. Make him stand out just a tad. All right. So from there, he is ready to be popped up. Oh, my gosh. I just realized my little card. There we go. Go back that way. There we go. My ribbon came up a little bit. From there, we're going to take him and we're going to put him up in the card or on top of the card. Bottom left-hand corner. Okay. And then the last thing that we're going to do is our sentiment panel. And that, for the AZ, we're going to take some of our embossing powder and we're going to attach it attach it is that the right word probably not we're going to uh stamp it with <laughs> our clear pigment uh ink i'm going to come back and bring this little guy over and like i said we're using the you're the best stamp and again that came from the all year long stamp set that you can get i hope my hair's out of the way uh, that you can get if you place 
a party, have a party, and the total be 600. I know it sounds like crazy lots, but my friends, it's easier than you think. All right, carefully do that. I'm going to take the, like I said, the clear pigment ink. I'm going to stamp it one time. And you know what? I forgot to use my little, my, um, this little guy, static clean. It's basically just a little baggie of powder so that the um, little embossing powder doesn't get everywhere. All right. I'm going to take this little strip real carefully where I've stamped it. I don't know if you can see that, but I promise it's it's there. And I'm going to bring my media tray over because it makes it super easy for me to pour the white embossing powder over it. And it's a really fun green color. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> All right, here we go. We're gonna just bring that over. Tap it so that your excess powder is off, off and away. And then I'm gonna get my um, embossing gun, um, my heat gun, and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so I've got my gun, and I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. It might be a little loud, but I think you, you could still hear me. So what you're going to do is you're going to just hold it up. Let's see if I can see that. There we go. And in a few seconds, usually about 10 to 20 seconds, you'll start seeing it melt. So that powder, pretty much it just melts and liquefies a little bit and turns into the such a fun little enamel type look. Go back over any areas that you might have missed. And we're done. There we go. There you got that super cute sentiment. And, and you definitely want to hold it with tweezers if it's a, a little bitty little um, section like that because you don't want to burn your fingers. Okay. Safety first. Um, okay. So... That's it, guys. Like, literally, I'm about to put this little guy on, and, and our card's going to be done ski. Order in this month, and you are a big fan of mixed media things like our pan pastels, our paints. They are an ex they're 20% off, 20% off this month. So you've got another week or so to take advantage of that deal. And also, if you have been wondering about um, possibly becoming a Fun Stampers Journey coach, to, this month is a great month to join. Um, if you have any questions about that or any of the products that I have featured here on, on this particular video, just send me a message. You can uh, find me on my website, which is www.funstampersjourney.com forward slash Janice Whiting. You can click on the shop link and uh, shop like you would any on online store. You can send me an email, comment below. If you want to know how to join and become part of my team, I'd love to have you. Um, and I think that's it, guys. Let me know if you've got any questions. I'm here for you. And we will, I guess, see you next time, which hopefully will be sooner than this one was from my last. All right. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.